And as you can see on the screen, the Central Energy Trust community screen, amplifying everything and making it bigger and better. As we see our cameraman saying hello from the sideline. And we are back here for game four of day two in Fly Palmy Arena. Andrew Horrocks alongside Josh Thompson and Josh. Pretty exciting news from BBNZ, just announcing the under-17 3x3 teams. Yep. Do you want to take us through it? Uh, I can. I'll just pull it up. Um, the men's team is uh, Louis Gordon, uh, Mitch Corkery, Nicholas Haywood, and Joel Brown, uh, coached by Cam Wilson from North Canterbury. Cam Wilson, I got to spend a little bit of time with him at NZ under-14 camp last year. Yep. Wonderful young man. And the women's team is Olivia Lassie, Tia Pavihi, Aaliyah Newton, and Zoe Richardson, coached by Francis Tilly from Nelson. Good old Francis Tilly. Got a great Francis Tilly story at some point. But in this game, we've got Stratford High School versus Aquinas College. And we're going to get into the team list in just a second. For Stratford High, number four, Brian Adams. Number five, Jean-Paul Mamming. Six, Cody, Ta Cody Carter, sorry. Seven, Jamie Jury. Eight, Tyler Kidd. Nine, Matthew Jones. Ten, Peyton Powell. Eleven, Kemp Nickel. Twelve, Ryan Nickel. Thirteen, Calby Natai Northcote. Fifteen, Flynn Murray. Tangahu. And head coach, Quint uh, Quinton Bailey. Yeah, and... Aquinas, we'll just wait for that to come up on the Aquinas. We have Isaiah Barry, Luca Ma, Spencer, Spencer Willis, uh, Will, sorry, uh, Taylor Harris, uh, Jude, Farrell, Archie, uh, Goobler, Dan Day, Nathaniel Barry, Luca uh, Adset, and Samuel Malone, and coached by Lawrence Young. Just coming back to those teams, Josh. I'm sure there's a triple way for that, so I'm surprised you're not involved to see the head, the referees, Terry Chung and Yao Zhang. Thought you'd like another triple way? Uh, yeah, KL, well, I've actually been to KL. I went with the under 18 New Zealand 3x3 team. A um, few names you might know on that team uh, was two-time MVP for secondary schools, Mitch Dance. Remember him. One-time MVP, Shalom Broughton for St. Kent. 2019. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Williams Dunn from Rosmini. One of the nicest young men I've ever yep. met. And uh, South Island boy, uh, Thomas Webley, who's in his sophomore year in college for Kashmir. Big uh, 6'10". Tom Webley could play. Yep. Didn't he average about 40 points a game at secondary schools? Yep. In 2019, they got bumped out in the semis, I believe, by Ros Minnie, who was with Tane Murray. Yeah, because he went crazy. I remember probably the most impressive individual nationals I've seen would have been 2015. Matt Freeman had, I think, 50 in the semi final to get through. I believe he had the game winner in the semi final too. I remember watching it on TV because I'd been away from basketball for a couple of years and saw that. I actually went to the same school as Matt for a little bit when he was at Criston. And uh, that man is a bucket. Wouldn't mind seeing him actually back in the AMBL at some point if he does want to come back. Yeah, very good shooter. 6'9". Six, 6'9", nine. Six, nine, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, he was about 6'6 six, six when he was in year 7. Yeah. Had the nice jump shot. Worked a lot with Dave McKay. Shout out to Dave McKay. Um, Cam Wilson, I saw he's leaving North Canterbury Basketball. What's he off to next? I don't um, think he said. I haven't actually seen Cam for a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see what he uh, has been doing. I know he's been trucking around the country with his uh, partner. Um, so shout out to Nicole. Baller herself. Is she? Yeah. As the Kaitakaro are ready to go, and we are underway here, Stratford versus Aquinas College. And I tell you what, we talked about uniforms in the previous game. This Stratford one's actually pretty clean for me. Nice, easy to yep. read numbers, Josh. Yep. There's always the key as the commentator having good, easy numbers to read. Um, 
especially because we sit up here in the booth. Um, Although I would admit the uh, the pin the under appreciated pinstripe of Aquinas. Yeah. It's quite understated. Would you call that aqua? Aqua and yellow. Let's go with it. As yeah. the two rapper ends up in Aquinas' hands. And it's Harris to the hoop. Off the tupper and gets the friendly roll and we are underway. And I'm completely wrong because it's actually Stratford. That is in <laughs> the aqua and blue and yellow. So apologies to everyone at home who's probably yelling at their TV set saying that Andrew Horrocks has no idea what he's talking about, <laughs> and that would be correct. There's Harris again. No, I do actually have it right. No, you do. Yeah, Stratford are in the red and Aquinas are in the... Hey, it's been a long red week red. already. You've done... This is your eighth game, and it's only day two. And we've got, what, 16 to 16 go? 16 to go. Sick! Yeah, I think me and you have got Four or five to go together, so, you know. We'll have our chemistry down pat by then. <laughs> hey, man, my goal is just to sound like you and James Lusselman. If I can get to that <laughs> level, man, then I know I've made it. <coughs> Shout out to James Lusselman. Uh, What's James doing this week? I'm surprised he's not down here. Uh, he's having a break. I think, you know, him and his wife, uh, Bina Lusselman, who is obviously away with the New Zealand under-17 women's team, um, a little bit of family time, I, I, I guess, for James and Bingham. I thought the basketball court was family time for a lot of uh, people here, of course. We're talking about the Jones family yep. as well previously. Uh, it is, because his sons play basketball as well, and a bit of football, flag football as well. So Great finish there from Taylor Harris. He's off to a strong start, uh, Taylor Harris, and here we have a little half-court trap, or are they just extending their 3-2 defense? I think it's quite cool whenever you've got boys and girls teams in the same tournament. Of course, we had Aquinas College were on the live stream yesterday. Oh, what an athletic move there. Again from Harris. And I feel like in these competitions, especially schools compared to reps, you seem to end up saying the same names over and over again oh, because yeah. they have the biggest effect. For sure. Um, Talking to Trent earlier, um, Canterbury, we do exceptionally well in the rep program. Yes, you do. Um, but we seem to struggle at high school level because, you know, our talent's so spread out. You know, one of our teams could have five, six rep different schools represented. Um, and, you know, that's just how it is sometimes because our region is so big. Um, it is it's one that's always got me because you guys are so dominant and it's been a, a thorn in my side previously employed by Harbour Basketball <laughs> when we're looking at our national titles every year and yep. Canterbury have about six. We were, you know, sometimes we'd have a good year as some associations do as we see a lovely finish there from Luca Adset. But recent years, especially in the boys because Waikato won everything in the girls but yep. it was just Canterbury, Canterbury, Canterbury and it's always surprised me personally that it hasn't translated to high school basketball as much in recent years. You've had good semi-finalists, but no one that's kicked on to win. Yeah. Um, but this could be a different year this year. Yeah. Um, there's a quick timeout here by Aquinas. Lawrence Young yep. taking the very quick wahiki, but yeah, Christ College looking to, to change that. Yep. St. Andrew College for the girls, uh, looking pretty strong as well for from Christchurch. Um, those two teams have been building for a long time. Um, I know um, St. Andrew's girls, I don't think they've lost a game in two years, two and a half years. <laughs> if there's been the Nationals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the year that uh, last year, I think they did a North Island trip played St. Peter's maybe and maybe Hamilton Girls. Yeah. Played a few Auckland schools. Um, came out unscathed in those ones, but they were close, I think. In, in anticipation, there was going to be a Nationals. It was like a... Will we, won't we? Yeah. Um, Christ College, obviously, they've been building um, 
for a few years. They had um, both the books go through um, their their program and Ben Sheets done a great job there. So it'd be interesting. Uh, it's not so clear cut this year on to who's going to win. You know how in the past we've kind of been like, yeah, they'll be in the final. Who are they going to play? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's already we, the, the waters are murky this afternoon as we see a lovely steal from Spencer Wills and it goes around the tapa and finally Kurufifi Toru attempt for Aquinas to get their own two rapper courtesy of Luca Mahi but we saw uh, New Plymouth's yep. victory over Auckland Grammar yeah that was impressive uh, New Plymouth boys. Um. Been commentating with Stacey Lambert for a few games and he was just talking ags up quite a bit. Yep. Was quite impressed with them and then to see them go down in a pool match uh, always shakes things up a little bit. Yeah. Um, a bit like we talk about, right? Whoever's in front of you, you just, you got to play every game. Um. You see some great shoe game there from Taylor Harris, but... Will the boys double A championship leave <coughs> Auckland? It hasn't since 2014 when Otago boys won. Yeah, that is the real question. All right, is it going to leave, go south of the Bombay Hills? I always find it funny, before St. Kent's won, there was a bit of a stranglehold from Rosmini Rangitoto and Westlake who had won, yep. I think it was 10 of the last 15. Yeah, that would be, that would be. And those three schools are winning the five kilometre radius of each other. <laughs> Lovely give and go. And a great rebound there from Luca Adset. But then you look at that, that's the North Harbour squad, right? Those three schools? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's what they consist of. It's three schools, or as you said, yeah. in Canterbury. How many schools are your players usually spread out over? I'd say at least five. Five schools. Um, you may have... Two, two, maybe three from one school, but it's pretty spread out. Um, I know that the under-17 team had a couple, about five different schools in their national championship team. Um, as we see a foul there committed against Peyton Powell as he took it strong to the hoop. Keep going, Josh. Um, and I believe most of them are actually here representing their schools. Uh, maybe a few others that aren't here. Um, so it, it is a, a tough tough going for high school when we come and play uh, North Island teams that have established Brett players um, but talking around the, uh, the stadium a lot of the guys that don't play rep basketball have never actually played tough competition so it's real new to them um, so there's going to be another couple of years before you know they get used to it but it's it's great to have it back and it's always good to come to Palmy um, pretty much where I grew up to, to be fair um, and going to Palmy boys and seeing my old school there playing and you know a couple of old coaches that I played for so it's always fun and stuff like that so did you play double-A premierships? I did. I played two years double-A premierships. I coached three years double-A premierships, and the rest in five years were single-A. Talk about experience. We're seeing a little bit of a high-court press there from Stratford. It was an early lead for Aquinas, and they've pulled it all the way back, down 12-8, mm -hmm. looking like a 2-3 zone. Yep. Great little passing cut, though, and a foul on Luca Mahi, so he's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of Kuru Tautukus. Yeah, what's, like, I think, um, I think that was Natai Northcote there. He left the middle to take the high post and that opened that gap. Um, I'm probably saying to him, don't leave the middle, leave that to the guard, because if he leaves, <coughs> it creates that opportunity, and it did right there, and we got two free throws by uh, Ma. So we're seeing from both teams as well, they're, compared to other teams on the live stream, a bit more reluctant to shoot the Kuru Fifi Toru. Instead, preferring to try and get to the rim. So as you said, if they just 
sink a little bit further into that 2-3. Yeah. They're going to play gaps. As we're going to see an offensive foul called. And we've seen it a bit more, actually, this tournament. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I've seen a lot of um, on-ball screening called for offensive fouls. Um, players just not being set or the ball handler moving too early. Um, here's Aquinas with their extended. Looks like a 3-2. As Stratford there and a big Kurufifi Toru, courtesy of Peyton Powell. And I tell you what, I was talking before about Anahaku's private Instagram and how he likes to put the game highlights up. Oh, yeah. If Peyton Powell's a big fan of that, that's going to end up in his highlight reel. Absolutely. Shout out to Anna. Uh, was in Japan with him a couple of weeks ago. Did you ever find out what Anna does for work now? I have no, he wouldn't tell us. <laughs> it's like, you know Chandler from Friends? Yeah, that was yeah. like this, this big like secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he used to be at JB Hi-Fi and he used to work some wonderful deals for us. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, Arnold, like, you've gone to the desk job, what are you doing? And yeah. I think I've worked, I think he might be working for Logitech. Yeah, he sells um, stuff. That's what he said. It wasn't, it wasn't really clear cut on what I know. <laughs> Arnold likes to, you know, wiggle his way around and... You know, One of the smoothest talkers, of course. 2011 MVP for Rosmini College. Yeah, um, I think I was here for that. That was, I reckon, the strangest year of secondary school it basketball. Was. Um, I wasn't around in the Nationals. I just finished school the year before, but they weren't even in the Auckland Prem grade nope. and won Nationals. They, they then only won their open grade final against Kristen <laughs> by nine. Yeah. Kristen almost beat Westlake to qualify for Nationals. They lost in overtime. And that was a Westlake team that had the likes of Ty Webster and yep. Jaden Durand in their team. So Rangi Toto weren't even prems that year, and they had Isaac Fotu in their team. Yeah, I remember because I coached. We played while well, I was coaching at St. Bede's. We played both Westlake and Rangi Toto that year. Um, Westlake was really good. You know, Ty was, I think he was year 11, so he was still quite he young. He would have been year 12. Year 12. He was, but he was a young yeah. young player for his age, well, for his year group. I remember watching Rosmini's quarter semi-final. And there's that um, illegal screen we see again. And Anna was the only one that came off the court. And that was in the final for 30 seconds because he got cramped. They played the five guys for the quarter semi-final and they did not come off the court. There's a great video that actually lives on YouTube of 2012 Nationals. It's the quarter-final. Rosmini versus New Plymouth Boys High. And there's six seconds to go. I think Rosmini's down by two. Tohi gets the inbound. Matt Lacey goes to set him an on-ball screen. There's about <laughs> 10 seconds to play. Tohi just kind of stands there. Takes one dribble, takes the shot off one foot. And Matt Lacey's just looking at him like, what have you just done? <laughs> and the shot goes in and Matt Lacey's just like, oh my God. <laughs> that so, was in Nelson, I believe. Yeah, Nelson? back in the day. You used to yeah. alternate, didn't it? It was part, because I think Harbour had it in 2006 was the last time they potentially had it. Uh, I remember or going 04? to 04. Harbour was 04. 05 was in Nate Hastings. Um, I was with Palmy Boys in 04. I believe Evandale won. They beat Mana College. And yeah, that's four. when BJ Anthony was on yep. year 11. And that was the last game Corey Webster, the only game from year 11 to year 13 that Corey Webster ever lost yep. was to Avondale, I think, in the semi final. Never lost another game of high school basketball for his prem team. No, I think we were the closest to beat them in 05. We lost by nine. Oof. Um, that's a stacked Westlake team. I mean, when you talk about yeah, Tom best Kobe. high school teams of all time. Yeah. Tom Abercrombie, David Clark, Corey Webster, Rob Lowe, Rory Fannin. Yeah, that's right. Rory Fannin was there. Warwick it. Siddle. Um, trying to think who else they had. Oh, uh, Wallbutton. Tony Wallbutton. Tony Wallbutton was in that team. Yeah, these these are like these are all guys that are my age. Yeah, so I played against all those guys. I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's great to see what Corey did for the Perth the other night. And it's good great to, to have him back in the NBL. Oh, it is. He's, so t he's just so skilled and so talented. Um, and I remember 06 was in Christchurch. Was it? Yep, 2006 was in Christchurch. Uh, that was uh, obviously Warwick Settle and all them had left, and Corey was, you know, still Those doing games are actually on YouTube. Yep. 
There's a young Brooke Roscoe carrying his team to the final. They played uh, St. Pat's Town in the final, I believe, in uh, 2006. And in St. Pat's Town won 07 08. 07 08. Westlake 2009 and then 2010 I believe they won Fraser everyone repeated yeah so they won 2010 yep and then it's only left Auckland once since and that was 2014 yeah Sam Timmons Joe Cook Green um, Josh Peterman Jalen Duran's still angry about that he reckons <laughs> Westlake should have won <laughs> and he would have had the three-peat no one's three-peated when was the last time there was a three-peat? Probably Church, right? Church College has to be the last. When they had like the seven-peat. Yeah. And I don't think we'll ever see that ever again. No, I think with the changing of that, I think the girls haven't three-peated for a while. And St. Peter's have gone back-to-back -back twice in the last. Oh, I think. They're going for oh, the Oh, what a finish peat. there. Nice. From number nine, Archie Glove. Because I think, was it year 10 that Charlize lost? And yep. then won 11, 12, 13? No, she lost in year 11. I guess yep. so she went, nine, was it 9, 10? 9, 10. And then 12, 13? Yeah. She won MVP, I think, four of her five years of high school. And the person that beat her out was Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm so gutted about Tanika and her knee injury. Cause, yeah. Yeah, um, it's, it's tough. But... Prayers to Tanika. Hopefully she's back next year for St. Peter's. I'll tell you what, and I hope this never actually gets to her, but Leanne Walker is probably the person that scares me most in basketball. Oh, 100%. Lovely, lovely woman. Yep. But just scares me. Yep. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm 100% backing you on that one. Shout out to Leanne Walker. Best coach though, like I can see why she is so good at what she does. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, um, she did. Her and Jody did a great job with the Kahu. You know, they fell short, but and obviously she's the current assistant coach for our tour fans. Great kick out for the Kuru Fifi Toru, no good, and away comes Tyler Kidd for Stratford. It looks like we're going to have a pretty good game on our hands here. Yeah, both, both teams are, are really, you know, dogging it out. Um, we saw a great RI that was used but couldn't finish. I think both teams are looking for their first win at this tournament, I yeah. believe. I remember I got annoyed. I coached a terrible tournament in 2020. And Ken Coulson had always told me, you're going to get the best referees for the last place playoff. <laughs> and I got there and I was like, so I'm going to have good referees for this game. Got there and he didn't have the cream of the, the, cream of the crop, I'll put it that way. <laughs> And yeah, that was probably the last time I'll ever be allowed to coach reps. As here comes number seven once again, Taylor Harris for Aquinas. You know, his athleticism is really showing out, getting to the rim early. Um, you could have a serious game if you wear two different colored shoes. Yeah, oh, for sure. Those are the Rick and Mortys, I believe, made you, you by watch? Puma. Do you watch Rick and Morty? I don't. Ah, give us no. now, man. That is no. some good stuff. My son watches Rick and Morty. Um, really? Yeah. How yeah, old's your son? He's uh, 16. Oh, yeah, so he started to get the humour of it. Yeah. yeah. So he's a big Rick and Morty fan. Uh, now I'm still into my old school cartoons. Yeah. What are your go-tos as Glub rims out on the first one? Uh, I'd have to say Dragon Ball Z is my go-to. Uh, and... Naruto. Naruto? Yeah. We had a guy who used to fan. run like Naruto at school. Yeah. As no good on both. And here come a qu uh, Stratford, sorry. 30 seconds to play. And i got to say, you've, you've been in Canterbury a while now. Do you have anything to do? As it's another offensive foul mm. against Stratford. That was a tough one. Um, I thought that... Uh, Nickel there was set, um, but obviously our men in grey thought otherwise. Oh, and Lovely finish Harris there again. from Harris. And a challenge here for Stratford as they end the quarter. 
to try and either tie this one up or get within one. And that's going to be a good if he taught to attempt. That is converted by Cody Carter. And what a confident young stroke from the young man as his teammates are trying to rush out and trip over <laughs> to congratulate him. He had a few words there, I believe. Let's have another look at it. And beautiful arc on that shot. Did he have some words yeah, to say did, for his did. opponent? He had some words to um, Archie there. And Archie gave him a bit of a look like, uh, why are you talking? Well, he's talking because it's 16 all. <laughs> Love to see, of course, there was a... Uh, Amazing game that we rushed off to see in between these two games, Josh. Uh, yep, Manukura and Te Aroha. And it ended up going to overtime. Yeah, um, do we know who We do. Won? Shout out to Jordy from the BBNZ office. Looking at him right now as he say thank you. 88-85, Manukura. Tough. Yeah. So tough for Te Aroha with top two in each pool. Two, two really good coach teams, you know, um, Tia Tomato Frost with Monokura and um, Alex Stoyakovich with Te Aroha. I believe this is his last year with Te Aroha. Yeah, last year with Te Aroha is moving yeah. to Tauranga as the general manager yeah. of... Is it the Stingrays? Yeah. The men's team? Yeah, the men's team. And he helps with the fire as well. He I does. Believe. I think they're all under kind of one collective. Yeah. So, shout out to... Our man, Alex Stojkovic, of course, former development officer as well at Harbour Basketball. And talk about great haircuts as we look at Te Aroha. That is, uh, that is a fountain of hair. That's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, he, he'll he be up there. Oh, well, Fotu's afro is pretty good. How do we rate that one? Because you said Fotu's would be leading the afros. I reckon Fotu's is the best because he's got the it's bleached. Yeah, bleach blonde. And so that <laughs> takes a lot of effort to get to go through that amount of hair and bleach it. We see the volunteers on the school bench. We've got over a hundred this week, and I tell you what, I saw it would be pretty tough if we didn't have that amount. So thank you to everyone in the local region for getting around it, coming down and supporting this tournament. We say thank you very much. Yeah, shout out to our volunteers from uh, the Manua too. Uh, they always do a great job. And I wonder what, what year is this that Nationals has been in? It'll be close to 10 years in a row, right? 2012 was Nelson. Has it been here ever since? Yeah, yeah, I think it has. We see a nice little high post action, rip and roll and foul. Oh, unlucky. Great read though from Luca Absett. Didn't like the handoff no. option. Rip the other way and drew contact. As we have another look at it, nice little entry. There's a reach in foul there too by um, Jones, I believe. Or, you know, that could have been either Jones or Murray tying a hoe. <laughs> hey, shout out to all the NBA, NBL guys that are here coaching at schools, you know, seeing. Do you have anything to do with Quentin Bailey when he was playing for the years? Uh, with the Rams, you mean? The Rams, yep, sorry. Uh, no, not so much with the Rams. Um, yeah, obviously I've seen him around, but I was really never involved. I've never really been involved with the Rams squad, um, mainly just with the women's side of thing in terms of NBL. Um, but then obviously Joe Cook Green's here as well. Um, Who's he coaching? He's with Christ College, with Ben Sheets. He's assistant there. Um, Funny story, we were talking about the last time Joe Cook was here um, in 2015 with Kashmir. He, um, that's when he tore his Achilles. Oh, I didn't need to hear that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Andrew. <laughs> was, it, was he playing? He was playing, he was playing, yeah. Um, and that was the last time he actually was here at secondary schools. Um, as how proud is that Lau getting in support? in the background and I tell you what how good is this arena going to be when it fills up for finals we've oh, got yeah. A finals on Thursday night and then the big boys and big girls double A Saturday yeah I'm really looking forward to um, you know if you see Thursday night with the finals for the A and then the double A finals on Saturday you know um, 
Unfortunately, I don't think Geordie put me on the old uh, any of the double A finals, but it is what it is. Classic stitch up from Geordie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, my voice might not hold, so you might get an opportunity as the Kuru Fifi Toru is no good for Aquinas College away. Come Stratford down two here. Just over eight minutes playing the second quarter, and I like the idea with the low pass into the post. They just went looking at each other and just said, sorry, mate, my bad. As we see some more players in support. I believe that's the Aquinas girls. Yeah, you got to see them on the live stream last yep. night. And the Stratford girls are at, out of camera on our side of the... Great finish for Aquinas College, courtesy of Archie Glub. I see Aquinas College there, Shh, briefly. But it is cool, I mean, for people at home who might think Nationals is a bit of warfare because all you can see is this court. Yeah. You go two minutes into the other court, and man, that place is a hive of activity. Oh, yeah. There's at least, what, three, four hundred people in there? At least. At least. Yeah. And the, the craziest thing to me is we see a lovely run out pass and finish by Luca Mahi is that it's only $20 to watch 60 games a day yeah, that's for crazy. a whole week over nine courts. <coughs> Doesn't get much better value than that. You know, and I think we've already had, what, two, three overtime games over the last two days. Um, you had that Palmy boys versus St. John's game yep. that was on this, this court but wasn't live streamed. Actually pushed us out and meant I had to have my KFC at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> instead of 9.30 as I'd planned. Yeah. Uh, they went overtime and Palmerston North boys had been up quite big. I think it was 20 points in the third quarter. St. John's pulled it back and we ended up winning by nine in overtime. Yeah. Um, is it St. John's Hamilton have been a very good program over the, you know, since I was playing. Um, it's a Kauru Fifi Toto, no good. But on the putback there is Matthew Jones. Yeah, I felt a bit gutted for them in 2020, I thought. Yeah. Could have potentially been their year. Yeah, I believe they had... Ooh. They had Kobe, the point guard. Kobe. Um, uh, Kale Robertson. They had Kale Robertson, and yeah. then I can't believe his name has escaped me. It has. It's escaped mine, too. As he played for... Oh, Kodu Fifi Toru. As he puts the little hand out, Luka Mahi. I can picture him, and I've got a video of him on my phone playing basketball. And I can't... His name starts with A. Oh, Akiva. That's the one, Akiva McBurney Griffin. That's it. That Can't believe we both forgot that. Oh, and then um, <laughs> Finn Lally. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Finn. I remember I was coaching against Finn in under 17s, and he got a fast break. Zach Riley decided to jump with him, and Zach Riley regretted jumping with him. Yeah. <laughs> got dunked all over. Again, this whole full court pressure, and Mahi again. And you know what it reminds me of actually is uh, Tall Blacks, was it 2015 when Paul Hanari decided, to, no, Breakers. Yep. Paul Hanari decided to play full court five man. It didn't last, but it was uh, an interesting adjustment. I like the change up that Stratford has made just then. Yeah, obviously, Aquinas were kind of picking their zone apart. They went to the man, and the man worked and got them back in the game. I'm. Um, I like the pressure. They just they just keep getting leak outs. You know, Aquinas are faking up, straight for overcommitting, and that's how they're getting these little layups. Um, but if they shore that up, I think Stratford shore that up. Um, they can get themselves back in the game because they are working hard on offense and they're moving the ball really well on offense. I'm always a big fan of coaches who make adjustments throughout the game. They're not just this is what we are, and this is what we do, yeah. and this is all we're going to do. It's okay, they're doing that. We're going to adjust by doing this. Mm. I almost thought Kung Valley there was actually pointing to the big screen as we see some young Te Araha <laughs> players. Did it toughen over time. Um, but hey, happy to be here. Um, 
Shout out to a few Te Aroha alums, uh, Junior De Young, who's now in Canterbury, and uh, we had Manaki and Tatiana at Lincoln Uni, uh, which both their little brother is playing for Te Aroha. And uh, you see the boys in the background there still getting... <laughs> Having some fun with it. I love to see it. Still putting on a show. It is cool to see, actually, the job that Alex Tojkovic has done down in Te Araha. I know, I mean, you and I can probably attest to this. I know we come from two of the larger associations in Harbour and Canterbury, but I no longer feel like it's a two-horse race in anything. All the other associations are catching up. Yeah. And it's just getting sure. harder and harder every year, especially in the schools as well. Like this year, I've got no idea who's going to win. Yeah. The A's, all the double A's. Everyone across the board has lifted their game. I don't use the, become, use the word become more professional, but become a lot more proficient in what they do. And yeah. It's good for the game of basketball. Mahi again is absolutely putting on a clinic from yeah. the Toru line at the moment. They uh, might need to stop going under the screen there with um, young Mahi. Because he looks like he has a nice looking uh, stroke. It's cool, isn't it? I think if you can shoot yep. and you can defend your position, you can play at any level. Oh, for sure. Um. And a little bit of a fa uh, fan club there for Isaiah yep. Barry. And great pullback there from Brian Adams. I was trying to think of some Brian Adams songs <laughs> off the top of my head. I could only think of one, and I'm not going to talk about it at this point of the game. Oh, there is. Here is Barry with the fan club. And he gets a lot of the papamuri, and the torapa is going to be Stratford Ball. But it's cool, isn't it? There's not even that many people here, and it already feels like there's a bit of a crowd. Oh, so yeah. It gets pretty loud. Um. Come Thursday night when we get the finals going. As that ball hits the tapu. Sorry, the tapa. Uh, you know, it's going to be good. The fun thing about, you know, finals is everyone comes to watch the finals. You know, they, they are, like, supporting. They have certain teams they, they want to go for, and, you know... I guess us as coaches, we just like watching basketball, right? And seeing good basketball. And Another great Harris. run out there for Taylor Harris. But you're correctly, you're right. I remember one of my favorite things I did, the 2003 Rugby World Cup, Australia was hosting, I think it was Kenya versus Georgia. So what they did is if you were born on an odd day, you supported Kenya. And if you were born on an even day, you supported Georgia. And everyone actually got pretty into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, there's... I love... The intent here from Harris, getting to the rack. Um. Let's have a look at this from Harris. Nice little hesitation dribble. And I thought it was a little bit unlucky there for Peyton Powell. Yeah. Walled up well. It comes a bit back to that question of offensive player or defensive player initiating contact. Yeah, I, 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 we see it all the time. You know, if you go vert, you get hit in the stomach. What's your natural reaction? To Hands are going to come yeah, down. Come down. And like I think they need to maybe change. The, maybe be more clear about it in the rule book. Well, it's interesting as well. You always see the players. They think you've got to be straight up, but actually your cylinder begins at the front of your foot. Mm. So you've actually got a little bit of wiggle room there anyway. Great steal there from Luka Mahi. Yeah, Stratford is struggling a little bit with the, the length, I think, from Aquinas at the top of that 3-2. Uh, that and they're managing to get, you know, tips. Has yeah. another run out here for Aquinas. Mahi no good. And that's going to come off Stratford, so it's going to stay Aquinas' ball as subs in. And I was trying to find the sheet. Uh, one of the uh, sheets with the Māori pronunciation of it, there's a Caltex giveaway. 
Yes, thank you, Josh Thompson. So, the Celtics Good Sport Award, this award goes to someone here at the event who has done amazing things to help others, made a huge effort or inspired those around them by going well over and beyond. If you have any nominations, please send them to BBNZ. Please see the BBNZ team or send an email to tournaments at nz.basketball. And this award will be presented at the award ceremony after the AA finals on Saturday. So I think that's actually a pretty cool thing, Josh. Oh, yeah, it's great. Because um, obviously a lot of teams wouldn't be here without the people behind them, uh, managers, coaches, um, teachers in charge that have to give up their week of holiday to come you know, away from families. Uh, you know, and I think the students and you know all the players here appreciate what is done behind the scenes because it is a big job being a manager for a high school team. You make nationals, you know, two big tournaments that you have to organise and cooking and stuff like that. And big shout out to all the managers that are here. And I think the managers have the hardest job out of anyone at these tournaments. Yeah, they got to look after the injuries. Um, the late night runs for the laundry. Yep. <laughs> if you were to nominate someone right now from this tournament, who do you think you'd go with? Oh, there'd be a whole bunch. Um, There's Mahi there with another. He is Could a fire. Could have Toru, and it's he needs to be cooled down as Quinn yep. Bailey. Sorry, Quinton Bailey is going to take a timeout. I believe that's three in a row uh, from the three-point line, uh, the kudu fifi toru, um, as we say in te reo Māori. Uh, oh, gosh, there's so many, you know. Um, I can really only speak from my perspective in my school, uh, you know, uh, Sharon uh, Whitworth for the boys, for Kashmir, she does a lot. Um, even, the, even the people at BBNZ who, you know, come and organise the stuff and have to run around. Um. Yeah, I think the BBNZ team have done a fantastic job. I mean, they make our job easy. We've seen oh, another run sure. out there for Aquinas, but Geordie's done a fantastic job giving us all the names and numbers of all the players, giving us little rundowns of each team and what they do. Information. While we're up here, you know, we can't be around watching other stuff. So the fact that he does all that hard work for us and lets us be little prima donnas as Flynn Murray Tangahu puts it back is really appreciated. And then, of course, Catherine Jealous. Oh, what a pass. Oh, it's just in and out. But, you know, she's making little supermarket runs, making sure we've got lollies and water in the commentary box. So thank you very much to those two of the BBNZ staff. And then, of course, my biggest Caltech's good sport. Yep of all time is always Mike Lacey. Oh, for sure. You the know, job he, that he does in telling people's stories, helping them out. You know, if we didn't have Mike Lacey, even just, did, I don't know if you read the write-up on Darcy Finnegan last week. I did, I did. Shout out to Darcy. That man is a serious wordsmith, yeah. so always a man that I looked up to. He's probably one of my fourth father. I always consider Manu Fotu one of my second fathers. <laughs> uh, but no, we've got a lot of time for Mike. has some wonderful stories to tell. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Mike's great. I, um, I actually sat with him in the 2019 Grand Finals uh, night, helping him out and running the, the stat sheets to him uh, for updates on who's doing what. And, you know, he's called me a few times, asked me about who who the teams are to beat in the south and he just does a great job and you know and he's always here and he's pretty much he's everywhere isn't he you know and that great and the, the write-up he did on Darcy was great you know shout out to Darcy Finnegan coming back to her school um, winning tertiaries I think as well, winning the D-League as player and coach. As a player coach, yeah, winning the D-League. Um. I mean, I struggled enough as a player. Struggled hit miserly as a coach. Just doing one of the disciplines at a time, let alone doing both. Oh, beautiful spin move. And that's a foul. 
So he's going to shoot some Kudu Tautukus. Yeah, um, Luke is really living up to his first name, isn't he? <laughs> Luka Doncic. Yeah. But it's cool. We talk about Mike and stories. I mean, you know a lot of people down here, Josh. Some of the people you get to run into and, and converse with. Oh yeah, it's great. The basketball community. Yeah. It's almost the best thing about this tournament. It's not just the basketball; it's everything around it. Yeah, and the catch-ups, the stories, um, you know, just in general, talking hoops and watching games with them and hearing how they, what they think is happening. So, just like you know, we're watching Stratford and Aquinas here, and I really have enjoyed watching um, Aquinas the way they get out and run and. I've enjoyed Stratford as well because they might be down 16, but they're bringing some alternative thoughts to this game. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's I, a big block there on Dan Day. I have liked the way that um, they've changed their defenses. Uh, obviously, you know, you need to change things. If it's not work, why well, stay in it? And they've, they've changed and try to adapt. They've been unlucky on offense, you know. A few tip passes from Aquinas have led to... Big Kuru Fifi Toru there for Spencer Wills. Well, it's been cool just having, like, as you talked about the conversations, even just commentating with different people, seeing how they talk about the game, how they break it down in real time. As that's going to be half time here. Aquinas up over Stratford, 44 26. We're going to take a little break and we'll be back with you for the second half. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're going to go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. <laughs> from the Tall Ferns, we're out here in Flaxmere Park in Hawke's Bay. We just opened up this new uh, basketball court for hoops and parks. It's really cool to provide the tamariki with somewhere to go, somewhere to be physically active, play a bit of basketball with their friends. Good asset to the community, especially for those young ones um, who want to get amongst basketball. So yeah, it's really cool to see us open this new facility in this park that is just beautiful in Hawke's Bay. Perry Cameron here. Just want to talk a little bit about the, the Hoops and Parks and the Hoops and Schools program. Uh, it's been amazing. The return on investment is priceless. The accessibility for all the kids in the Tamariki to get in here and enjoy themselves, especially especially through these trying times, been amazing. And just to get outside, you know, it's pretty awesome walking outside and seeing this kind of ballpark available. Um, it's great, especially in these times. Kia uh, ora Paliti Oli here, councillor for Flexime Ward, uh, Hastings District Council. I'm um, here to support the initiative today, Hoops and Parks. Very, very amazing result and it's encouraging our people to come and spend time here and especially together with the youth. I encourage other councils to jump on board. Yeah. Kia ora Baire, Te Atu. Really enjoyed it here at the Flexime Court. Um, and looking forward to play again. Uh, we've been waiting for the courts to open for a while now. Now that they're up, I'm glad that they're here for an activity after school. And yeah. I like that the courts are purple. What I like about the court is that it's different to many other courts that flex me. I like these courts because they're in a good position from if you want to go to the park or come here. And I like it because it's easy to bounce the ball and take easy shots. My name's Ricky Lee. Um, shout out to everyone that made these courts happen. And yeah, me Naz. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah, feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. Welcome back here to Fly Palm Arena for day two of day four for the single A's. 
We've got semi-final action tomorrow night. We've got one boys game and one girls game. I'm Andrew Horrock alongside Josh Thompson. Josh, who's really stood out for you so far in this game? Uh, I've really been impressed with uh, Tyler, Taylor Harris. Uh, you know, he started off early, got to the rim. But the one that's really stood out in the back end of that first half was uh, Luke Amai. And just his ability to shoot the ball and get to the rack. You know, he's putting Stratford's defense in two minds. And, you know, he's been really impressive. Um, I have been impressed with uh, Stratford, their team play. You know, they've produced a lot of open shots. But they haven't really, you know, converted. And they're still in with a chance. I think, you know, the way that they changed their defense up, mixed it up, has been really good. Um, offensively, I think they need to move the ball a little bit quicker um, to beat Aquinas' 3-2, just to get it in the paint a little bit more. Which, a bit of inside-outside. <laughs> as we see, young fan. A good to see him wearing a Miami hat heat, as, heat hat as well. No doubt gearing up. Did you think you'd see the day that it would be so soon that an AMBL team would take down an NBA team in oh, the preseason? No. Uh, I can like I'm not surprised because it's a preseason game. Like if you said regular season, I think you know that might have been a bit different. But yeah, yeah, I just I wasn't shocked. I think it's been brewing because the Aussie league is pretty strong. Um, and you have imports, guys that are on the cusp on the NBA playing in the NBL, right? And awesome to see just how much hoops is improving in this part of the world. Great roll. Good kick out, little shimmy. And shot goes up from Matthew Jones, no good. And again, these leak outs. Yeah. Nice, easy finish. Just becoming bread and butter stuff for Aquinas. Yeah, they're just leaving that um, the runner go and oh, lovely little teardrop. I believe that was uh, Peyton Powell. Yeah, he's been quite impressive throughout throughout the first half of Stratford. An eight second call. Referee Yao, not afraid afraid to blow the whistle there. But it's cool, isn't it? Now you're seeing these three-man actions. We practice a bit more out of the 3x3 setting. We were talking before about the under-17 teams for New Zealand that you didn't even know about, and <laughs> probably because you're on another trip, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I'm off to Turkey. Um, I just find 3x3 is just it develops your game more in terms of decision making making it quicker uh, like I said earlier in the other game playing through contact and you have to actually be skilled to be able to break your defender down um, but it's not about all about one on one um, away screens, flare screens slip screens you know we do a lot of those kinds of things uh, in practice for 3x3 and the uh, the Carl Neuer special, the old flare screen. Yeah, yeah, he loves a good flare screen to shoot a big a two pointer in three x three. So shout out to Carl Neuer running uh, Swiss Factory up in Auckland. He's probably got I reckon the highest percentage in the country of just what are you doing with that shot? Yeah. Versus actually making it because he makes some ridiculously tough shots and felt a little bit gutted for him in the three x three finals in Tokyo. Probably didn't showcase his best ability. Yeah, he he just didn't have a good. This wasn't his day, you know. Sometimes, um. as there's a foul called, and so no, no Cody, foul, no foul. No, no, like no, it. Sorry, is that a screen? Look, so Cody Carter had joined the contact there. No, Aquinas with a quick early timeout. Now that looked like a block, I think. And I think Coach Young is going to talk about. Offensive rebounds off a of free throw and just securing it. Absolute killer. Do you run any special sets for boxing out out of uh, free throws or you just match up? Uh, for 3x3? Nah, 5 oh, and 5. 5 and 5? 
No, we just really match up. Um, there's, you know, I'm just, Max, I, ha I, as a coach, if you, uh, we're the defensive team, I hate offensive rebounds because you should not give away offensive rebound on a free throw. But it does happen. How, how often do you see it happen? Well, let's say you're probably going to make the second free throw. We're going with high school kids. Let's say 65% of the time. So you've got a 35% chance of there being a rebound. Yep. Then there's probably, what, 80% of those should be Deep defense. Yeah. Well, I mean, 100% should be. But you're yeah. probably looking at 80%. So you're probably looking at probably 6 7% of the time. Yeah. Which is quite high, right? When you think about it. But... Hey man, it's the beautiful thing about coaching high school athletes. As you get those little brain explosions. Nice little rip pull up. Cross court pass. Thought about the, the total attempt. Three and seconds. three seconds. And actually good calling there of the three seconds from Terry. Because I know a lot of people actually get confused. They think if you were just yep. in there that it should be three seconds. But the reality is you've actually got to be part of the play. So they can either call it when you're catching the ball or you're a part of the play. Because a lot yeah. of people as well, it actually inhibits your offensive ability because if someone's in the key the whole time, you don't have a driving lane. No, no. So it's a, just a... If you gain an advantage of standing there for three seconds, that's when you get called. Um, so I could stand there for five seconds, but if I don't get the ball, am I gaining an advantage? Probably not. Uh, but if I am in there for five seconds and I uh, get advantage of getting a shot, then obviously they're going to call a three seconds, right? My favourite uh, manipulation of that rule is that as soon as the shot leaves the hands, the three, three seconds is over, so it doesn't count. Yeah. So you can just kind of camp in there for O boards and put it back. You see a defence chart going up for Stratford below us. Ooh. Is that a kickball violation? Uh, I think he caught a double dribble there. Atupanarua. So here is Stratford looking to claw back into this Aquinas lead. And quite an interesting 2-3 uh, zone there used from Aquinas. Didn't actually pass off the ball handler. No, they kind of looked to double team that one there on that one. And it leaves everyone wide open the corner. And no good on the Kudu Fifi Toru attempt. Nice kick ahead pass back. Will we see a ball reversal? No, we won't. We're going to see high post action. And a Kudu Fifi Toru attempt is good. Harris. Taylor Harris. Taylor Harris and Luca Mahi. Oh, they just, yeah, they're just taking over at the moment. I did like... I. I like the fact that Luca did not shoot that three the, off the kicker head. He was wide open, worked the ball, ball back, and they used their little, you know, high post handoff action. I'm interested to see just how good now these semifinals are going to be for the A boys because Aquinas had some heavy losses in their pool games to teams that have gone through to the semifinals. Yep. So. I think they're playing pretty well right now, so it tells you just how good the standard is at the top of this A-boys section. Yeah, well, teams like Manukura, Te Aroha, um, Opanaki as well, Opanaki. Quali qualified. Yeah, uh, Ngātai Atia, uh, who I think are topping Pool B. Yeah, from what I saw, that was correct. <laughs> Great cross-court pass, he saw that early. Uh, Hornby High School from Christchurch. I think those are going to end up being the four potentially that are uh, the semi finalists. Shout out to uh, Jimmy Williamson, uh, son of Helen Williamson, who was um, the other assistant for the mainland park guy that I work with, um, with Tully Bevilacqua. Tully looks like an absolute legend. She is. Um, you wouldn't think that she won a world championship with Australia. 2006? 2006, yep. And 
you wouldn't know that Lauren Jackson is a speed dial on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that one. That's, yeah. uh, it was awesome as well to see Lauren Jackson back for the Opals. Yep. They went down to South Korea by two in the semi-final. No, China. Was it China? China, yep. So what could have been for Lauren on her return? But yeah, Tali just looks like an absolute good sort. I can attest to that. Um, so oh, deep, deep. I think that was tipped. That looked like it was tipped. Yep. Yep, correct. Yeah, um, Luca putting his hand up saying, yeah, I tipped it. There are some good sorts in this game. They obviously won their Caltex award. Yeah. Don't you love honesty in basketball? Unless the game's close and you need the ball back. <laughs> That's not always the best policy. No. Great run out and finish again from Aquinas. So with live stats, I'd say they've probably got, what, 40 points? Oh, yeah. Out that, of the fast break? They are really good at running out of that zone. I know yesterday um, you and Ryan talked about it's hard to rebound out of a zone. As another fast break, easy points there for Luka Mahi. But I find you run better out of a zone. If you That's do get point. the rebound. Because you're already in running positions almost, right? You've got two wings and a middle guy. Um, you know, people, my other people might think otherwise, but... And another triple. This time from Tyler Kidd. And I tell you what, we might have to have A and double A. Oh, all haircut teams because Taylor Kidd's mullet is uh, pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um... We did have one in the other game by... It was 25, I remember the... Yeah. Remember oh, the Turner. That's the one. Yeah. Timmy Turner. That was it. So, Spencer Wills. I'll tell you what, he's got a good set of shoulders on him. He's clearly been in the gym as a young man. I have found that is a big thing more so today than it was when I was playing about getting in the German but there's a shout out to SSC and the studies that have done shout out to Logan Bodica oh yeah who I talk to him all the time I hope the young athletes that work with him because he does a lot of stuff in the upper north island we saw Money Mike Wade that was on the stream before yep. from Te Aroha comes up and works with him but to have a resource like that for kids these days oh as we see a bit of body contact it's just taking their game to a whole nother level. And the athleticism now compared to when we were at school, yeah, it's, it's, it's night and day. Yeah. Um, I have to give a shout out to our SNC guy down at Lincoln Uni, uh, Hawaii Smith. Um, he, he does some great things. He's obviously doing a study with purposely for basketball. Awesome. For his masters. Um, yeah. And he's got the, the VR sports uh, are things that they wear in league and rugby, the GPS system. So yep. he's got those that athletes wear. Oh, what a little split of the double team. And great putback from Nathaniel Barry. Now, I really like the look of um, Harris, the way he slashes to the hoop, you know, and he's also got the ability to shoot the ball. And here we see him on defense. I think Aquinas have gone to a man to man. Yep, they've changed it up a little bit. And another Kurufifi Toru for the Stratford. Both teams lining it up here in the third quarter. Yeah, Luca Mahi, I mean, he's only under 15. Yeah. Played for Tauranga this year at the... And, and 15 Nationals. Yeah. So it's impressive stuff. And we talk about young players, Merrick Rulestone for St. Kennegan's College. Probably had about 30 today. He's only under 15, only a year 10 boy. So yep. The future's so bright. And have you seen Oscar Goodwin from New Plymouth? Yeah, he's a big, he's a big boy. <laughs> and I've seen his highlights. <laughs> he was at um. He's under 15s as well. Yeah, he was at under 14 NZ camp last year. Yeah. Probably the same size. <laughs> and I just saw him. I was like, Are you serious? Because I thought I'm fortunate enough to have coached Jameer Reed a little bit, and I thought Jameer was out of this world in terms of what he could do. But man, seeing those guys, Jameer's vision yep. as a passer might be a little bit better but those guys is just athletes uh yeah insane 
we have a few athletes down in in uh, Canterbury that are unseen at the moment. Um, Hiding them from us until you guys win another age group title? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, shout out to... Uh, I actually trained one of them. Um, people might know his brother. His brother's more famous than yeah, most. Yeah, um, you might see him on a few ESPN shows, uh, Kendrick Perkins. So Kendrick Perkins' little brother lives in, in Canterbury. Yeah. Uh, Kanye, because... <laughs> Kanye, Kanye Perkins. Perkins. Yeah. How old is he? Uh, he's year nine. Uh, he's 6'3 now at year what? nine. Yeah. Kanye Perkins. All right, remember the name. Yep. Shout out to Kenny KP. Um, played for the Rams and the Giants back in the day in the old NBL, Kenny Perkins. I remember, I can't remember what year it was, maybe it was 2011, when people found out that Kendrick Perkins' dad lived in New Zealand. Yep. And so there was this big thing of trying <laughs> to get him to play for the New Zealand team. I was just seeing a lovely little 2 2 1 from Stratford, broke pretty easily from Aquinas. And Taylor Harris is going to go to the line. But yeah, there was a lot of chat about trying to get Kendrick Perkins to play for the New Zealand national team. Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, funny story. My grandfather brought Kenny Perkins to New Zealand. <laughs> Tell us the story behind that. Um, when he. This was before I was born. I've known KP since. Yeah, he's known my parents before I was even a thought. Yeah. Um, he came. Oh, I'm sure you're definitely a thought. Yeah, he came play for Mordehu and you know ended up playing for the Canterbury, you know, Otago, Nelson, winning championships with Nelson and in Canterbury. Um, and he just he came. He loved the vibe. Obviously, like a lot of Americans back in those days that came to New Zealand and stayed. He was one of the ones that stayed and. Shout out Benny Anthony. Shout out yep. Tony Webster. Um, you know, Terry Stallworth, Kenny Mack. And Kenny Pav, RIP. Yeah. That um, one was getting. Terry Stallworth's done a great job down in Wellington as oh well. Yeah, he has. Alongside Kenny Mack. Uh, Angelo Hill. I'm gutted Angelo's not here. He's that always sharply dressed. Yep. That booming voice. As you see, a great look there for the Kuru Fifi. Toru can't quite get the good bounce. Good Dan Day. And it's tipped from... Um, and it's going to stay a Aquinas ball. But man, I feel like one day, athletes are all just going to be generational. Oh, like you're yeah. seeing now in the NBA, all those second generation NBA players. Yeah, for sure. And it's only going to get more and more. And we're kind of seeing that here at secondary schools, right? How many kids that we know... Um, I know for the double-A, Judd Favell's daughter, Bailey. She's playing. so good. Still oh. only under 15, but so good. Uh, Phil Jones as well. Phil Jones has Hayden. All, all three of his kids playing. Um, we would have seen the books, I'm sure. We would have seen but them. But Nick uh, got an offer to Oak Hill, and you don't turn down Oak Hill, do no, you? No, we don't. Obviously, you know, Corey Webson, uh, Ty with Tony. Um, so it's just an influx of, like, Players that have, you know, parents that have played in New Zealand that are playing in this tournament. And, of course, uh, Mike Rogers, who you might know, uh, his daughters are playing for Aquinas on the girls' side. Oh, yep, yep. Former Harbour and Tauranga CEO. Good to see him as well, giving back, coaching those girls, and pretty handy little team. See Stratford's... Gone back to a 2-3 zone. Um, and if I don't even know you play a zone, you still got to work hard, right? A lot of people think that, oh, I'm in a zone, I can just rest. Nah, zones like, are nah. not, especially the good ones, are not yeah. lazy at all. They can actually be so tough to break down. Yeah. If the arms are wide, people are moving. The old Syracuse, Jim Beheim. Oh. 2-3 yeah. zone. That needs to be cancelled. <laughs> they look shocking all year, and they get to tournament play yeah. and make runs that they shouldn't. As you almost see in the beautiful athletic finish, but out comes Stratford. Athletes running, and what a finish from Peyton Powell. Out ahead of everyone. And that is going to do us for three quarter time. Aquinas 56, Stratford 41. 
Josh Thompson, anything in that third quarter stand out to you? Uh, yeah, I really like how Stratford, you know, settled down on defense and really made Aquinas work hard. They got a little steals, forcing them into bad shots. And, you know, as we see there, Peyton Powell out there running, getting out on the break. Um, I think he's going to be, you know, an important part of Stratford's comeback if they are to make a run at winning this game. And it just looked like Aquinas went to sleep a little bit there. Comfortable up 20, but like we said in previous game, 20-point lead is not huge anymore with the shooting ability of, of all these teams and players in today's game. It's been ridiculous, actually, some of the team scores that have been racked up in this tournament from both sides. It hasn't just been one team blowing the other team out because they're better. It's, it's been basket for basket, you know, consistently in the high 90s or even early hundreds. Like, do you think that's the skill level of players has just gotten better or is that the rules have catered more to the offense? Or what do you think it is? I think it's the speed of plays gotten better. Yeah. Um, I think if you go back and you watch stuff from the mid-2000s, there are players that have got the same skill ability and probably everything then was more geared towards team play and yeah. It sets and actions, whereas now, because players are more skillful, you're seeing a lot more actions where it's giving players ability to make decisions out of those things rather than following a script. Yeah, yeah, because I know when we were playing, we were a big script team. We were big, so we used our bigs. Um, and I know our, our, our motto was like, first team to 75 will win this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If we score 75, we're probably going to win the game. But today's game is, well, if we score 90, we saw we're in a shot for win the game, but the other team might have 90 as well. <laughs> yeah, I remember we were in, I mean, you still had games like that in high school. I remember we had a game that determined whether or not we came to nationals. And uh, we scored 97 and didn't make the trip. We gave 102, no, 104 to Dilworth College. I could see them making a comeback under Josiah Muhammad in Auckland, but yeah, that one was gutting. I remember in 2006 there was a dunk comp. From I remember that. There's, um, yeah, there's they had highlights. Corey Webster as a a judge. No, BJ was a judge. Uh, Those guys was, got away with everything, man, when they were in high school. He was he was injured. That's why. Um, and a kid from Dilworth won. It would have been David Dyer. Yeah, he like this kid just came out of nowhere. He beat the likes of Dion Prusa was in that dunk contest. Um, I remember there was a good story of I hold that thought Dion Prusa when he was an intermediate under 13s yep. was dunking in the warm-up and I think there was like six teams at the under 13 nationals and the Harbour team just looked at it and they're like nah <laughs> we're done but anyway you're saying Dion Prusa. Yeah he was in that uh, we had another guy Sam Crozier from Christchurch he was an athlete um, but yeah the kid from Dilworth won Jumped over someone on the chair, sitting on the chair. It would have been David Dyer, I guarantee it. Um, do you remember, I remember the, the craziest dunk contest win? Everard Bartlett, when he was a development player for the Breakers, won the AMBL dunk contest. I think it was 07 or 06. Funny story about that. I talked to Everard about that dunk contest, yeah. and that dunk contest ruined his eligibility to go to America. Was he... Oh, okay, the story... T so... That's what he... Yeah, that's what I, I heard... Yeah. <laughs> Poor Ev, man. That guy was a bucket as well. <laughs> yeah. People don't realise how athletic he was back in still the day. Still is. Yeah. Like, can still get up. But can shoot the ball. Shout out to Everard. Hawks Bay legend. I never knew that story. That's... See, this is why you come to Nationals. Yeah. You learn, you learn these stories. Oh, man. Because he was a development player at that time. So I was like, who was Everard Bartlett? Uh, my family had season tickets at the time, so we got all the newsletters and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> he always has to have, he used to have the weirdest development players. I remember, uh, and he wasn't weird because he was actually an extremely good player. Do you remember Lance Baker? Yep. Um, who else did they have? Mika was the first season, I think, was a development player. It's kind of a shame that they've gone away from using local players as development players. I remember yeah. it was always kind of a cool thing of which year 13 is going to end up as a development player. And as we see a great three again there from Luca Mahi. 
probably the best one cohort was 2012 when they had Ty Webster and Ruben Tarangi were on what they called the D team then. Yep. And you look at two guys that have gone on to have pretty good pro careers. Yeah. Um, you Ruben. know, they played in this tournament, so... Oh, man, I'm still angry. 2012, I was doing all the stats for Westlake, and I was like, yo, going to get to come to Nationals. We were top seed for Zone 1. And then they went, nah, Lane Ashby King is going to come and do the stats, and he never even did anything. <laughs> and Mitch Richmond was like, bro, we <laughs> needed you. And they took down Rosmany College in the final. And, I mean, some pretty good players in that game. Matt Lacey was playing for Rosmany, Tohi Smith-Milner, uh, Daron Rokawa was the best player that year. And then for Westlake, Jack Salt, Ty yep. Webster, Jalen Durand. That, that is a pretty good squad, that one. I think every player in that team at some point had played for a New Zealand age group. So, uh, man, it's tough. Like, I mean, you talk about best, we're talking about 2005, 06 Westlake teams. I think that 2015 Rangitoto team was pretty tough. Yep. The likes of uh, Dan Fotu, Sam Wardenberg, Bragan and Inga, Ty Winyard. Joseph Nunag as well, I believe, was on that team. 2018 Rosmini, Tane right. Murray, Cruz Pero Hunt, Mitchell Dance, William Heather. I'm not going to lie, the best high school team I've ever seen in New Zealand is probably, and with my own two eyes, is the 2003 Church College team here in Palmerston North. Talk me through some names. Was it the Ooh. names or was it just the way they played? It's just the way they played. Um, Nick Purcell, David Burgess, these guys, you know, they were like the top guys when I was at school, but... That was your epitome of five on, five off, nothing changed. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you beat these guys? Well, you heard the stories of uh, Ray Cameron when he was at Church College. Yep. About just the trials of trying to make that team. It was uh, tough. I was, I was talking to uh, Stace yesterday about Church College in the 90s. Yep. And, you know, like Mason LePoe, Caslow Evans. All the guys that came through then. Yeah, Polder Winitana. Do you ever hear the story about Polder Winitana scoring 100 in a high school game? I have not heard that story, but I would, I would believe it. I um, was fortunate enough to coach his son, Polder Winitana Jr., in 2018 for age group stuff. And I think someone got ta his, his teammate got taken out in the air or something, and Polder got so angry about it, he dropped 100 at nationals in a high school game. That's crazy. That must be a record. Has to be. Oh, for sure. I remember Ty Webster did something similar. But he and I am doing only in this. Only dropped 45 and put scored 26 straight points in the game. Because yeah, someone said, you're that not that good. And he's like, okay. <laughs> scored 26 straight. I want to see someone in, in this tournament at some point beat Jalen Duran's 73 points that he had. Is that the highest score you've seen in... I know uh, Nicole Nicole Russ had 71. What? Yep. She's a bucket. It was good to see her back playing this year as well. It was, yep. Um, she'd been out of the game for a while, uh, studying. Um, but yep, Nicole Rusk has a 71-point game. Some of my girls won't like it because Lauren Hippolyte was playing in that game against Nicole Russ. Nicole Ross dropped 71 on Lauren Hippolyte. It wasn't, Lauren will say it wasn't on her. She's <laughs> going to hate me. If she's listening to this, she will hate me. Um, but it was like, you know, Lauren Hippolyte was in that team. Amy Book was in that team. Uh, it was a Middleton Grange team. Helen Williamson probably won't like me saying that either, but. And she, I think she took three, three, she made three threes in her 71 points. Man, yeah, I probably Tom Webley was it 2019? Yeah, his had some, 50, some big games. I think against Tottenham Boys in the qualifier. Yeah, I kind of missed those. I remember it was uh, Matt Freeman and then Taki Farrenson went off for Auckland Grammar in 2015 as well. I think he had a couple of 50 point games. Bit of a hit there taken by. Um, 
Kelby Natai Northcote. I think Samuel hit him there. Two big bodies colliding. Let's have another look at that. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Got a little elbow. Unintentional. Yeah, it's funny, with that uh, tucky explosion that he had in 2015, people completely forget that Kankai was on that team as well. Yeah, because he's an Auckland Grammar boy too. Auckland Grammar. Yeah. Um, they had Tom, I can't think of his name right now, and it's annoying me that I even brought it up. The point guard, he played uh, New Zealand in the 16s. Oh, well, we'll come back to it. Yeah, waiting for the next, like, Auckland Grammar winning team. 2011, I reckon they should have won. Is that Ruben? Ruben? Yeah, Ruben's, yeah, they had a squad. Josh Young as well. He could really score. Magnus Holding was on that team. Now a pilot. Yep. Got to see him at a wedding recently. It was great to see. It's kind of cool as well. The players who excel at these tournaments and then go on to be amazing in their fields that have nothing to do with basketball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it happens. Um, I think that's what, you know, the good thing is you, you remember guys that play well in this tournament, but they're actually successful outside of um, playing basketball. And Great little move there once again from Taylor Harris. He's been really impressive this game. Him and, you know, Luca really set the tone for, I mean, to build this lead. Um, if your name's Luca, you don't really have a choice. No. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I'd say those two, what, majority... 75, 70% of their points. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Spencer Wills has chipped in a little bit. Yep. Archie Glub. Luca Adset's been quite impressive as well. Mm. You know, you can't give Stratford. They've been, they fought hard. They're playing to the end. Um, I have liked the look of Peyton Powell. He's, he's been impressive. Matthew Jones has been quite good as well for me. Tyler Kidd's done a little bit as well. Yeah, so they've just been a few unlucky rolls. You know, they if they made shots, does that lead to leak outs? Um, but that's the biggest thing. Um, I know Quentin Bailey will go back, look at the film, and see what they did wrong. And shout out to Glory League. Because um, I know Love that Glory League. you can watch every game in your pool. There's a link there. So you Is that a thing now? Yeah. So you don't actually have to film the game. You can watch it on Glory League. Um, but obviously, as you know, as a coach, you always have your camera. You're always scouting. Um, just talking to a parent recently, and they were like, oh, why, why is the other team videoing our game? I was like, well, it's a scout. You know, they, they that's the way it is. And... I even said that. Look, I did that too when we were at uh, the D League and just watching, seeing if we could change things, beat the other, uh, you know, make adjustments for the other teams. So. Question for you: At what age do you think teams should start getting into scouting and learning scouts and and film and stuff like that? Is it under 15s? Is it? High school stuff, 17s. What, what are your thoughts around it? I I honestly think under 15s would be, because, you know, the caliber of player they were getting under 15 is... It's pretty high now. It's pretty high now. So I think under 15s. Um, if you want to be a successful high school program, um, you know, film is key. I know at Kashmir, we, you know, a lot of teams use huddle. Um Shout out Huddle. One of my favourite things to use as well. Yeah. Um, Glory League obviously is a big thing. Um, if you don't have Glory League, then just what I was doing at Ellesmere, I just had a student, paid them $20 to <laughs> film the game. <laughs> and you know the funny thing is, Glory League's actually cheaper once you get it installed. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just installing it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the, the upfront cost. Um, but no, I think, I, I think, if you want to be a successful high school program, you need film early. 
Um, and if you want to go to college. Oh, big, big time. I yeah. mean, it's strange when we're in high school, you get maybe one player a year. You're like, wow, that kid's going to go to college. Yeah. Whereas I think it's awesome. And shout out all the people who help get these athletes over to oh, the United yeah. States. But what's that, 120 yeah. kids that we've got this year? Applying, I mean, not applying their trade, but earning an education. Yeah. And but the best thing that parents like is that it's free. Yeah. They get it. That's a great find by uh, Taylor. You can see Aquinas College having fun with it at the end of this game. Oh. Blocked there by um, Luca. I miss the old days of having input into what went on to Glory League, what features we could put in. Yeah, that, I do like what they did. Is blocked there by um, Edsy. Great pass and finish from Luca Edsy. Aquinas just running with this, away with this one. I just think they built their 20 point lead and, you know, Stratford held it, but it was all those leak outs and run outs early and often that kind of hurt Stratford in, in the long run. Um, oh, great bench celebration for Jamie Jury. I'll tell you what, that's pretty cool, man. Like, oh, for sure. To be down what they are and still having a lot of fun with it, for me, that's what this tournament's all about. Oh, it's about the experience and, and having fun at this tournament and just being here is, is great because, you know, it's not a given thing to be here. Absolutely not, man. You've got to earn it. It's yeah. so tough, especially now with the depth of teams. Oh, unlucky by uh, Nickel. That's one of the things I wish I'd been able to do in high school was to make... My secondary school nationals got close. We came top eight. But what a finish there. Is that a behind the back dribble as well from it, Isaiah Barry? It was. Hopefully we get a quick look at that in replay. Thank you, R producer Rich, doing an outstanding job with our clips. When we get a chance, we're going to have another look at that play. Is, oh, did we just see a, a self falcon? <laughs> we did. Right, let's have another look at that previous play. Look at this, behind the back. Oh, it was. Nice. Is and that Barry, is it? It, it was. was. Isaiah Barry with the behind the back finish through contact. And if we end up making a top 10 of this week, I'll tell you what, that could uh, have a, a chance. I remember we played a Kiva McBurney Griffins dunk put back dunk about 30 times <laughs> in 2019. Shal Justin Nelson Shal loved it. Shalom, Shalom Broughton's put back dunk in the final. Oh, who did he, what did he stare down? Ray Harner after that? Yeah. Um, oh man. That was big though. He was so good in that tournament. And another big Korufifi Toru this time for Kemp Nickel. Love seeing how the way Stratford finished in the game on a high. Um, and I just like the no give up attitude, you know. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. I have seen a lot of that. Penetrate and the corner guy cuts. We're talking about that actually quite a bit yeah. on the uh, on the stream. Everyone seems to be cutting and no one wants to hold in that corner. No. Like I'm... If you have a good guard that knows how to pass the ball and know that you're going to cut, that's fine. But if you, you know, yeah. So we are done and dusted here on the show court. Aquinas 77, Stratford 49. And we're going to take a look at what action we've got coming up for you tomorrow. It's going to be a bright and early start for me, Josh. Am it I is. with you tomorrow morning? No, you with right. Uh, Ryan runs an early at 10.45. 10.45, and then Stace, Sammy Watkins, and then I come in at the 7.30 game. You just like the little graveyard shift, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so coming up first, 
Double A girls, Paul D, Hamilton Girls High School. Runners up last time in 2019. They take on Hastings Girls High School. And then following that, we've got some double A boys, Paul B, St. Bede's College, up against Nelson College. And while we work out tomorrow morning who's going to be in the A semifinals, that'll be distributed through all the BBNZ channels. Don't forget to check out www.nz.basketball for everything to keep up to date with the tournament. For Josh Thompson and Andrew Horrocks, hope you all have a wonderful evening, and we will catch you bright and early tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. Going once, going twice. Number offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. Running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex.